look, now we're going to head back closer to home and we all can remember the terrible floods earlier this year which devastated uh, a lot of the eastern seaboard uh, of the North Island, um, in particular the Hawke's Bay, um, Gisborne, um, there was Northland and Auckland and then there was also a little community in the Wairarapa called Tanui. And uh, Tanui has had issues with flooding in the past, uh, but this time, uh, uh, this year, it got really smacked about. Uh, so online we have uh, resident Carol Forrest. Good morning, Carol. Good morning. And uh, Carol, you came on air with me, I think, um, not not sort of almost in the middle of, um, or just towards the tail end of uh, the first week of the floods mm -hmm. um, in Tanui. And uh, I haven't, I can honestly say, I haven't actually been out to the coast since then, um, because my work tends to take me to the further south of New Zealand. Um, but just, can you just give us an overview of the good things that have happened and, and some of the um, more pressing issues that your community's facing? Okay, well, I'll just start with saying it's been a long, hard and bleak year. Yeah. Um, there were delays fixing claims. In fact, there's still delays with fixing claims. We've still got some people displaced from their homes and now the Masters and District Council is working with them um, and negotiating them a way out because I think some of these houses can't be occupied anymore. Yeah. Is it many of them or is it just a handful of them? Uh, it's just a handful. Yeah. But some of these people have been camping around the district in various other accommodation yeah. since February. And that's wow. not a good look for anyone. No. Um, so if you visit Tanui, the first thing you'll notice is that the, the roads and everything look back to back to normal, the grass is green and neatly mowed, but the two main shops, one of which was a cafe and one is the old 1878 general store, uh -huh. they're still empty awaiting um, insurance resolution. Right. Um, the Tanui Craft Shop moved within a few days of the flood over into the post, the old post office, which yep. is on a much higher site. Yep. And, and, and the museums moved there. Then that they were operating again really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, um, we've had a conservator from Wairarapa Archive restoring the items that got damaged in the little museum with silt and uh, water damage. So they're all being fixed up. So that part of the village is, go is going really well. The big issue for people when they're down is actually they need somewhere to meet. Mm -hmm. And the school took over the Chinui Hall, so that ruled it out during, for you start during the day. Yeah. And then the Chinui Hotel was inundated far worse than the 1991 flood. The couple who were running it, it was really the last straw. So once the insurance claim was uh, made, that went on the market and someone from Levin, a chef from Levin, has bought it and oh, that cool. is due to open very soon. Yep. In the meantime, a resourceful family opened their garage to anyone who wanted to, you know, bring, um, bring a bit, bottle of beer with them and sit yep. in the early evening. Um, we have a number of elderly men out here who would go down to the pub and have their two beers and then go home again. Yeah. So there was just nowhere for them. As well as that, the Fokitaki Hotel or the Castle Point Hotel, whichever you want to call it, yeah. that was closed and was being redecorated. So if you wanted something with alcohol, the options were Masterton or Masterton. Yeah, that's a long way. Um, a long way for a drink. And then you can't drive anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. And then uh, but the t both pubs were used a lot for groups getting together for either lunch or, you know, for an evening mm. meal. Yep. And it would have been a logical place for the community to get together, say, every Friday night for family fish and chips. But without that, we've, been, we've actually been quite lost. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> That's looking to open soon. Um, well, the Fokitaki Pub has... Boys are actually coming on later on in the show. Um, are they? Which will are be they? really great. So I'm talking to Ash at 11.30. Oh, 
Oh, fantastic, mm. fantastic. Yes, I love old pubs he's... and there's so few of them around, you know, and I, I give hats off to anyone who takes on an old country pub. It's a hell of a mission. Um, so it's good to hear. It is. Right? It's good to hear. It's good to know. Ash had several restaurants in Masterton, as you mm. know. Yes. And um, it's really good having someone who really knows how to do it properly. Yeah. Um, we've had people out here owning pubs who weren't, who didn't come from a hospitality background, and that's tended to pose its own issues. Mm. Um, but but yes, it, it, it seems a bit buoyant out here. Yeah. Um, on the farming front, we, uh, lambing was good this year. Um, everywhere you drive, uh, bright, shiny new fences and posts. Yes. Everything on the flats had to get replaced. And there was that and huge effort too, because it was rolling, or how we roll in the wrapper. Um, that actually, Mike Butterick had quite a bit to do with in the Rural Support Trust, I think. He um, did. Yes, and, oh, my yes, goodness, they, they just did. rolled out fences everywhere. It was just incredible to watch what they were doing. And little gr- and groups of people from Wellington, you know, Wellington corporate staff came up and spent the, every, every fence that wasn't destroyed was full of um, debris. Yeah. It looked like... That cheap fencing you can buy in the warehouse that Your had fetch. the thatch. <laughs> yes, that's what it looked like. Yes, yeah. yes. But um, big fat lambs are bounding around the paddocks. I know. It's so like the green. It's almost like the. It's like the bloody. Because we had such a wet winter, and last year lambs didn't grow that well. And because um, I always remember our home killer came to our place, and um, because we were so understocked, our lambs were actually not too bad. And he said, and he said to me, he said, your lambs are in really good condition. He said, not the same. He said, because they haven't had much sunlight, the lambs haven't been that good. And of course, we're having a bit more sunlight, but oh my goodness, boy, wrapper is just like lush. It's just lush. Lovely and lush. It, absolutely, it absolutely is, yes. Um, we, we needed this. Yeah. I'm just looking out my window now and the hill of one of our big farms, and there, every farm had scars and slipping. Mm. Um, it was just, I think I might have said at the time of the flood, it was like a giant had stomped over the whole district. Yeah. But now those now those slips are starting to be covered with green, and there's been a lot of poplar pole planting over winter. Yeah. To um, stabilise those, so it's um, that side of things looking quite good. Mm. And of course, um, farmers are delighted with the um, well. It's not quite the change of government yet, but <laughs> <laughs> are they looking forward to the change of government? Aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, an extraordinary, um, extraordinary hiatus of all the political reporters are having to interview their typewriters. Oh, it's so funny, isn't it? When you've been in a communications, you've been a journalist, and you watch what's happening at the moment. They just need to take a bloody holiday, you know? Just go away Actually, for a week. That, they do, they do, because <laughs> they're not going. <laughs> No one's going to say anything. Just go away. I have a, I have a recall <laughs> of the last, was it 2017? It might have been Tova O'Brien with her head down on the floor listening to see if she could hear anything <laughs> from, the, from the negotiations. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, and then you get the likes of, the interesting thing is, this is totally an aside, but I'm, I'm just loving it, is Eugene Bingham's amazing piece in the post around um, the background to Doc and a real interesting look at conservation and the Ministry of Conservation and is it on the right track? And that's what journalists should be doing right now. This is a bit like the Christmas period when you have all your Christmas holding stories. Get out there and dig deep. Oh, There'll be so yes, many cool um, stories that they could do. Yes. But we've kind of we're kind of still at the and the road toll is X and yeah. three people died yesterday. Yeah. Um, Whereas po- if they came politics. out to Tanui right now, they would have some good insights into the process of what happens after a flood, where things have gone right and where things have gone wrong. Are people to read that? Of course they would. Of course they would. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Then we've had another a little blow in the last week or so in mm-hmm. that where the two main organisations that operated in the district were the East Coast Coasties Rugby yep. 
and the Chinui Parish. Well, the Chinui Parish, we learned, has just been subsumed into St Matthew's and we have nothing out here, no services and really no support. So we're not entirely thrilled about that. And the timing is diabolically bad, given that people are still recovering um, from the floods. The people I worry about here, the uh, rural support have been fantastic with farmers. Yeah, but, but but because of the way they're funded, um, it's very difficult for, for them to help anyone. What I call our little people out here, the ones who maybe blokes on their own, yep. um, elder, elderly people who don't fit into any of the helping categories. Yeah, and I think it's been quite hard for some of those. 